Let me tell you of the days of high adventure. I'm Kevin. I'm John. And this is Six Degrees of Schwarzenegger, the podcast where we take a long, hard look at some of our favorite action movies from the era of Arnold. (laughs) Schwarzenegger is the icon of the genre, and we're taking a deep dive into some of these 80s and 90s cult action movies, and we're breaking them all the way down. Hello, dear listeners, dear friends. Um, <laughs> Hello, all. Hi, John. Happy holiday season. It's nearly upon us anyway. Yeah, it's got to be in that a, neck of the woods. A couple of weeks, yeah, till Thanksgiving now. Um, we are happy to be back with you again for another episode about uh, Passenger 57. Yes. Um, die Hard sort of. Die Hard ripoff. Yeah, basically. Die Hard on a plane. <laughs> die Hard on a plane. Die Hard at an airstrip. And greetings and salutations to all of our uh, listeners on the Last of the Action Heroes podcast network. Um, Thanks for listening. And there's one particular guy. I think he's our hardest critic. He's he's always complaining that despite us being six degrees of Schwarzenegger, why don't we have more Schwarzenegger movies? So we do need to get back to something Arnold. Is it time to return to the well? We've got to, I guess. But like, look, we try to explain it. It's the yeah. era of Arnold. Yeah. Arnold was the centerpiece, but if we only talked Arnold movies, we'd be through them all pretty quick. And again, it's six degrees of Schwarzenegger. All of these things are related. They happen at roughly the same time, yeah. similar plots. They all are just, they all are, it's a nebulous uh, sort of incestuous <laughs> yeah, family exactly. tree of movies. And I guarantee, I guarantee you that if we went through the production team list, we'd find six, ten, 14 guys that worked with Arnold that also worked on this movie at some point. Absolutely. Put Um, that in your pipe and smoke it. Ripper snapper. We appreciate you listening. Hell yeah. And, uh, you know, we'll be back to Arnold soon enough. Keep that animus coming, though. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Keep listening and keep being mad. (laughs) I love it. That should be our tagline from now on. (laughs) I just hate. I'll take hate listeners any day. Hell yeah. Um, Just as long as you listen. (laughs) <laughs> but so I'll try to catch us up on what's happened uh, up to this point in the film. What in the world? Yeah. So we're up to the 47th or so minute of the film. And I mean, it'll probably take me about 47 seconds to sum <laughs> it up. But basically, you got Wesley Snipes playing the character John Cutter. He's a airline security specialist. Right. He's been uh, hired by Atlantic International Airlines to head up their anti their anti terrorist task his force, pal whatever. Sly Del Vecchio. Yep. The the wonderful Tom Sizemore. So he's on a cross country flight uh, to be introduced to the board of directors or some type thing. Yeah. And wouldn't you know it? The FBI has also placed a famous international uh, airplane hijacker what? on the flight to be transported to Los Angeles to stand so trial. So weird. So that guy, Charles Rain, he has planted his own crew of bad dudes on the plane and they've taken over. Does any of this sound familiar? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we've got a fly in the ointment, a monkey in the wrench That's on right. the plane in the form of Cutter. He has forced the plane to make an emergency landing in Lake Lucille, Louisiana. Louisiana. Yep. Um, he's gotten fallen off the plane, basically. Right. And been scooped up by the local law enforcement who instantly, by nature of him being a black man, <laughs> think he's up to they, no think good. He's, they think <laughs> they should be detaining him. Um, and Rain is basically negotiated yeah. with the sheriff to put some fuel in this plane um, and I'll release some of the hostages. Or the, or the blood of dozens will be on your hands. Yeah, so that was that's a good close job, enough. Man. Very I mean, nice. Yeah, very nice there's a, job. There's a flight attendant, Marty, right. on board, who's sort of like sidekick ish. Right. She's cutter. sort of at this point. She's she's not quite Cindy because from Commando, but she's no, yeah, she's not as involved in the action. But um, there's no romantic chemistry between them. 
as yet. As except yet. Except for that very, very first scene. Yeah, they had a little, they had a run in in a training session. Um, right. Where there was a little bit of sparks flying. Right. But she at this point is, she's been caught by rain and been smacked around and she's being forced to do what she's told. Yeah. Um, so I guess I'll, I'll run this thing. Do so, it. So out on the tarmac, <laughs> a truck labeled aviation fuel <laughs> rolls up as bodies are being bagged up and loaded onto ambulances. Yeah. A stair car is rolled into position to start unloading passengers from the plane <laughs> as agreed. You're going to get a lot of hop on. Oh, that's yeah. That's what I think every time you're going to get some hop on. <laughs> for for us to develop it. Yes. So inside the control tower or room or whatever that this little airstrip has, the deputies wrestle a struggling cutter in front of Chief Biggs. They tell the chief that they found him <laughs> down by the plane and he attacked them. Which sounds <laughs> sounds familiar. Cutter says that's that it's more bull. That's yeah. the more bullshit. That's. I mean, these are like cartoonish portrayals oh, yeah. almost. It's Except like Keystone. And also, we see this same shit in real life all the time. Yeah. The same type of just no, blatant attacked, lies. He attacked me. He attacked us. Yeah. So Cutter says if he'd been a- attacked, that he wouldn't be the one bleeding, which is a fair <laughs> point. So Biggs asks, well, why were you down in the airfield? Cutter says that he's head of security for the airline and was a passenger on that flight. B- <laughs> Biggs says, and he's not wrong. You're not doing a very good job, sir. <laughs> that may that was kind of hilarious. The fault is the FBI's, to be fair. But, True, but but yeah, not doing a great job. <laughs> um, Cutter asks, "Hey, why is that fuel truck labeled fuel airline fuel outside?" Big says, uh-huh. "You know, I've negotiated the release of half the hostages." And Cutter's like, "No, no, no, you can't make any deals with this guy Rain because he can't be trusted." And we've mentioned before, like Cutter seems very aware of Rain and his and his tendencies, right? Oh, All of a sudden, I, it's like I do. Is, I suppose that's part of his job. Maybe his expertise is to know, yeah, who these key terrorists in the world are. Yeah, it would have made more sense if he'd been the one, like, oh, I know this guy. Like, if he'd said to Marty or something at some, yeah, you know, at some point, like, I know this guy. You know, I've heard about him in my line of work. He's like the, you know, the Dillinger or whatever fucking airline hijackers but anyway just then the kindly old lady that helps run the airstrip tells the chief that rain is on the horn rain tells biggs that cutter was a part of the crew of terrorists and betrayed him (laughs) and to feel free to kill him since i might not get a chance he's and he describes him as a black man very smooth and convincing (laughs) This is so weird. Biggs instantly draws his gun on Cutter. Like, he's like, I believe it, this black... I knew it. Instantly. Yeah. He, he, he says, instantly trusts the terrorist. Yeah. He says you're one of his. And he says, I know mother... And then <laughs> Cutter says, I know motherfuckers who said they saw Elvis in a goddamn mall. You gonna believe that shit, too? <laughs> Which, a great, a great point. But, like, yeah, just instantaneously, like, I got... Well, the terrorist must be right. This black man can't be trusted. <laughs> so, Biggs checks Cutter's ID... Sees that it is as he says, but still is still hesitant, hesitant to believe him. This doesn't say anything. This says you're some kind of security specialist. Yeah, put yourself in my place, Mr. Cutter. What would you do if you were me? Kill myself. Yeah. <laughs> Shit. <laughs> Pretty that, awesome. He's not, Cutter's not making it easy on himself. Cutter never does. Cutter is not a likable guy. But anyway, on the plane, Rain instructs Sabrina, played by Elizabeth Hurley, to wait one hour and then take off. That'll give me the time I need to escape. She's like, let me come with you. But he's like, no, I need you to stay here on board and carry out the plan. Which uh, I, we don't know what the plan no. is. And it's never revealed what the plan never. is. Never. And I'll tell you what, it doesn't sound like it's great for the people who are getting left behind on the plane. Nope. <laughs> no. Also, the music in this bit was straight up like diehardish yeah, sounding. It, it wasn't did. that other jazzy score. Yeah, there's this like this motif like that keeps playing yeah. over and over again. That it's sounds like, very like um, Horner and those guys. It's like, it's, it's like, yeah, it's straight up. Anyway. So, yeah, he tells her to start killing passengers if the authorities won't let them take off. Then I'm, she smiled at like the like, prospects yes. of getting to kill passengers. Fuck yeah, that's she what, is. Nuts. That's what I signed up for. I'm so, sure. She, I'm sure she is amazing in bed. The oh, character yeah, of Sabrina, definitely. like yeah. she's just insane. Yeah, just. But you, you like never want to see that person again. Well, she's the type <laughs> of person who's gonna like 
at the moment of climax, like produce a razor blade and slash your <laughs> throat. Praying mantis style. <laughs> produce a razor blade that she has hidden below her tongue. Right. <laughs> Fuck. Slice your Yikes. throat. So outside, we see the plane door open and passengers come running out. Back inside the plane, we see Rain take the elevator down to the underbelly. What was weird is, the, yeah, as the passengers come running out, to my knowledge, no one has been hurt. Right. But like paramedics are just administering the hell out of first aid yeah. on the tarmac. Like they had people they were giving them oxygen and Maybe, checking them over. And that makes sense though. Could be having, especially if they'd had like what could have been a rough landing or people were like, the plane was herky and jerky and my knees are hurting because I need to sue the the airline after this is over. Oh, uh, fair how many, enough. How many lawsuits came hell from this yes. incident? I wonder if there's fine print on every airline I'm ticket. I'm sure that there is. It's there probably like if you crash. Also, like if we crash, this is how much... Yeah. Your settlement is right. exactly. type stuff. Yeah, all that stuff is pre-taken care of. So um, we then cut to Forge overseeing the debarking. One passenger tries to force his way off the like, tr- just tries to like hurriedly cut in line and Forge guns him down in the aisle. Yeah, what just, was like, that dude's deal? Like, dude, you're getting off the plane. You're in line. There was Chill. no reason for him to like want to rush. No. It would but it also would have been so easy to fix some of these things. Yeah. Like you could have just, Forge could have said, all right, five more people are getting off. And then, yeah. And then he tries to rush from the back of the line or something. It's, it would be so easy. Yeah. To, to have these, to make these things make yeah, sense. And the budget of this movie wasn't huge. So, um, anyway. So this, the gunning down of this rando sparks a panic among the passengers that are getting off the plane. In the commotion, Rain, Vincent, and the, 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 nerdy the, bookish, goon. the bookish goon <laughs> drop out of the landing gear unnoticed by anyone uh-huh. and walk toward the carnival adjacent, <laughs> just right next door to the airport. <laughs> yes, <laughs> which made me think maybe Forge was under orders to shoot somebody. Maybe, but that guy just sure to cause shit a made commotion. it different. Like, um... And if that was the case, then there should have been some communication between Rain and him, like before he got you off the plane. Which is like, do, you know what to do. Yeah, that it would this, have been. That's what I'm saying. These things are so easy to make it make sense more. Like than, it would have been like if if all Rain would have had to do is look at Forge and say five minutes, and then you could have shown Forge looking at his watch five minutes, and then he just blows someone away. Yeah, just anyway. these things aren't these things. It's not it's not that complicated, or no, shouldn't be. No. So how in the blue fuck? no one saw the three bad guys jump off the plane is quite beyond me. Well, I think that's like, I guess the, when the shooting happened, then people started scrambling. There's around. no, but nobody, they don't stop looking at the plane. There had to be yeah, cops or somebody like watching the going on. Did goings they drop on. out of the landing gear? Yeah, they came off the landing gear or okay. like one of those little side doors or something. Yeah, somebody should have seen it, but there were, there wasn't enough big law enforcement presence yet, right? Yeah, there was the paramedics and... I I guess, but I still feel like Chief Biggs could have had another couple of uniforms you out need there, a like a spotter or yeah, something. Yeah, something. Um, anyway, in the control tower, Cutter is trying to warn Biggs that this is some kind of a trick. He's not wrong. Biggs tells his deputies to haul Cutter downstairs <laughs> and shoot him if need be. But in the leg, he might be telling the truth. <laughs> That oh. was that actor, man. He was rock solid with like his his Buford T. Justice. Oh, that's type exactly shit, what know? I thought too. Yeah, and like he might be telling the truth. Yeah, <laughs> it's so, good stuff, man. Um, as they're like, then he asked for a, he asked for some Buffrin. <laughs> yeah, you, can you make some make me some of your special coffee? And I wanted if buffering. Buffrin paid for that mention. That was, that was awesome. Just, like I, was like, I hadn't thought about Buffrin. Same baby. Since I think they used to maybe advertise on the Braves games some back in the day. Goody powder or something. Goody's headache powder. My dad still rocks the Goody powder. That's available still. Oh yeah, in the little packets. I don't even know how you do it, but he like opens the little packets and just like you oh, shoot it right. What in are your you mouth. supposed to do? Dissolve it in water and yeah. drink it? Yeah, but he like he just dumps it in, dumps it like in a his pixie mouth. Stick? Yeah, exactly like a pixie <laughs> stick. So anyway, as these guys are escorting cutter down the stairs he gets the jump on them disables both of them and it's and escapes i love what? the funky music that cranks up during the ass whooping though well there was a bit right right before that sort of set it off where you know cutter's trying to tell him they're making a mistake and he's like shut up boy like shut up boy you ain't said shit i want to hear and i'm like yeah that's de- that one definitely had like the racially charged oh, yeah. uh absolutely vibe going on so yeah. we we forgive cutter for just fucking whipping their asses definitely so outside cutter runs up and this this motorcycle cop tries to like stop him <laughs> Does, i can't really know who he is no, but for no particular yeah. reason like whoa a, that black man's running so anyway 
Cutter fucking roundhouse kicks that dude. It was like a jumping, spinning kick. I loved it. I was like, that's some straight up guile from Street Fighter shit. That poor guy, he didn't deserve to get concussed like that. There's some ribs broken or something. So um, police cars pursue Cutter across the tarmac. He is, Cutter's making hostages dive out of the way (laughs) as he charges them down with that motorcycle. Yeah. So he's like, he crashes through a locked gate. Seems like it would crash you probably. Yeah, so, but it's, you, you have to understand that it's, it's very important that they stop the black man, but not the three white terrorists who slithered out the bottom of the plane. Um, sure. Anyway, the busted up deputies run back to Biggs. Chief, prisoner got away. No shit, Earl. That line <laughs> made me laugh. I giggled at that. No shit, Earl. Want us to head out? Why is that, Luther? So we can get more practice whooping your dumb ass? <laughs> it's so good. Such good interactions between the yokels. Um, so Biggs tells them to get back up, get over there, and not to use deadly force unless there's no other option. Right. So, yeah. so my question is, why? how did Cutter know to go to the carnival, to the fairgrounds? <laughs> Because it's the closest <laughs> thing nearby. It's a great question. How did he know to pursue to the carnival? I, to the first rounds? of all, Cutter doesn't even know that Rain got off the plane. No. It'd be one thing if if he knew Rain had gotten off the plane, and where's the most likely place he would maybe try to go and disappear right. or blend in or whatever? Then I'd buy it. But he doesn't even know he's off the plane. Like unless no, unless yeah, you needed again. You could have had him up in the tower saying they're getting Look, off the they're I see it and they're like climbing down the landing gear right now. And then they're like, get him out of here. The you only know, thing that, that, that even remotely comes close is because he tells Biggs, this is a trick. This unloading of the passengers thing is a trick. And so he he knows that when the gunshot is fired and all that stuff that he's like, oh, he must be making a getaway. But like none of that is communicated. And it and it it's asinine to assume that this guy who hasn't seen and that there's been no dialogue to establish it would just yeah. be like fairground it's got to be at the fairground yeah <laughs> anything yeah anything you're it, it yeah it's like a thing that as a audience member if you're just watching and you're half drunk or whatever then we've seen him get off and he's heading to the fairground so we know cutter's doing the right thing right. but there's no way in hell no. that cutter could know that he's off the plane and heading to the fairgrounds. So the only thing that I can reckon is, is total agreement with Roger Ebert's take on this movie, which was <laughs> that Cutter would only know or only think to go to the fairground to look for the bad guys because he'd seen enough movies where the good guys <laughs> go to the carnival or the fairground to look for the bad guys because that's where they would go. That's where the, the cool, normal people. That's where the cool action can happen. Right. Also, <laughs> you're going to have weird music. You're going to have like bright like, colors and lights and like, rides. You're going to have an undercurrent of dread and despair and you know action happening in this very A lot of boisterous innocent bystanders. Yeah. That's the only the only way I could figure it. Yeah. <laughs> so it's meanwhile, great fucking point. at the fairgrounds, the bad guys are unsuccessfully trying to steal a car as Cutter rolls up on the bike and just like flings <laughs> the bike on the ground. Vincent it's, stealing cars is apparently out of these guys, you know, yeah, bookish, wheelhouse. Bookish goon doesn't know how this works. So Vincent goes for his gun, but Rain stops him, saying, "You know, we'll take care of Cutter." And Vincent, you should go get a car and meet us across the fairground in ten minutes. Which I didn't even get that like. Unless they were saying, you know, if my thought was maybe he's thinking if we start shooting, then it's going to then our escape will be ruined. Like, right. we, you know, I don't know. They'll at least know we've gotten off the plane if right. we start if there's a shooting at the fair. Maybe. I don't, I don't know. This is Louisiana. It seems like a shooting at the fair would be <laughs> old hat. Um, so, yeah, Cutter ditches the bike, rushes into the fairgrounds as more police arrive Back at the airstrip, the FBI have finally shown up and yep. asked Biggs for a debrief. Biggs tells the agent in charge, Henderson, to settle in. Um, the, that dude, Henderson, is played by Robert Hooks, who's okay. Kevin Hooks' dad, the oh, director's that's dad. That's kind of cool. That's very cool. Keep he was also like a good ass performance. I was about to say, yeah, guy. He, he was, was good. He was one of the one of the more memorable guys in the in the thing. So, um, oh wait, they show and then they show a cutaway of the plane, right? And B-roll. passengers are pouring down the stairs again. Hundred like, people. This is clearly <laughs> footage from earlier because right. they had stopped letting people off the plane, right. but they didn't have any B roll of 
the plane with no one getting off it, apparently. Inconsistent B-roll. So <laughs> back at the fair, Cutter steals a box of popcorn in an attempt to blend in. <laughs> I don't know how that makes him any less conspicuous. He, I feel like if anyone had seen the black man steal popcorn, he also would have been shot. At Citizens arrest. Yeah, exactly. So as he's walking around surveying the mostly very white crowd, he passes Rain's miscellaneous bookish goon who begins to follow him. Uh, I can't. I cannot stress in strong enough terms how much it bothers me that that goon had his shirt unbuttoned, but also tucked into his pants. Uh, like it was unbuttoned all the way down. It's and a then look. it was tucked into the That's pants. A look, baby. I. It was insane to me. Um, Kevin, they've got all kind of whack shit at this fair, including rednecks, Shriners, <laughs> rebel flags. <laughs> A giant inflatable Bud Man. There was a lot of Budweiser product yeah. placement and Tabasco. Yeah, at the fair, delicious. Two things you need for a hell yeah for a, a, sh- a son sh- of a gun time a on, the bayou, boil on the bayou or something. Yeah. yeah. So just then, Cutter spots Rain and starts to pursue him. Rain gives him a smirk. Yeah, which is like okay. So come follow me. You're supposed Wouldn't to sense these traps, yeah, aren't you? Don't Cutter? do it then. So, meanwhile, back at the airstrip, the terrorists are not responding to the FBI's attempts to hail them. Big says, all we can do is wait. Then Idly says, man, I hope that cutter guy was telling the truth. <laughs> okay. Um, Agent Henderson is bowled over by the mention of the name John Cutter and asks what happened to him. Big says that Cutter told him, he told me he was on the plane, but then he beat up a couple of my guys and headed to the fairgrounds. But don't worry, we're going to catch him. And Henderson's like, well, then I hope you got a good early retirement plan. Biggs had asked uh, Henderson, how you know, how do you know Cutter? Yeah. Which is a fucking good question. He's a fucking legend in every law enforcement circle Everyone's somehow. Everyone's heard of him, apparently. It doesn't make it, like, again... Yeah. Has he saved people on an airliner before? Like, and, what and, and the in 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 the context of I think the original script, maybe he had in a way. Like we mentioned that in the original script, his his wife Lisa had died in a in an attack on a plane that he was also on board in. But yeah, there's no everyone. His reputation precedes him. He's like the throughout. fucking Sherlock Holmes of airline security, <laughs> I guess. Apparently, so, yeah. Yeah, so then Henderson tells the other FBI guys to, you go look for Cutter, and then he looks at Biggs and he's like, you better see to it that your men don't harm Cutter or I'm going to press charges against you personally. I bet that was another big like crowd pleaser moment yeah. in the theaters. So yeah. It's like, fucking yeah, put this redneck this sheriff honky, in his place. honky ass in his place. So Biggs looks nervous because he done fucked up. <laughs> he knows he's got a squad full of bad apples. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> Lots of police brutality there in Lake Lucille. So back at the fair, Cutter trails Rain into the livestock tent. <laughs> um, the other, the bookish goon is there too, still tailing Cutter. Did you see Rain started just eating popcorn out With of another child. girl's yeah. little box of popcorn? Yeah, so across the children's square dancing ring, Cutter and Rain lock eyes while Rain is eating popcorn from this little girl's container. Fucking weird shit. And... As Cutter makes his move, Bookish Goon shoots at Cutter, but shoot like shoots and kills a clown instead. <laughs> which <laughs> wait, I mean, good riddance. What really. a wonderful plan. Yeah. It's just just shoot him when he's not looking. Open fire in this tent full of people. I don't know if you read this. What I read here is an awesome thing that I read. Like if it seems like there was a lot of high schoolers in the crowd, it's because there were, because uh Wesley Snipes, who is from Orlando, oh, yeah, like, yeah, did a yeah, thing yeah. with his high school. Yeah, too. I did read that. The, the kids with the top grade point averages get to be extras and get paid to be in the That's movie. That's awesome. That's fucking badass. That That's like a stand up cool thing to it do. Is. I love that shit. Um, it almost makes it OK that he cheated on his taxes or whatever <laughs> and went to, had to go to jail. Um, we forgive you, Wesley. Come back to us. I think it's time for a reboot of Passenger 57. They call it Passenger 57. 58. <laughs> yeah, sure. <laughs> so, um, Cutter flees. Now, the, the, the chaser has become the chased. Exactly. Cutter flees as Rain and, and the book goon give chase. Cutter <laughs> leaps onto a moving Ferris wheel. 
Rain opens fire but misses because I guess of the way he's hanging off the car of the yeah, Ferris wheel. I guess so. Um, he's I love, hanging. <laughs> I love the operator shuts it off and runs just away. Sprinted. <laughs> Fuck this. Well, it's why would he even bother shutting it off? I, it's just a weird thing because it was know. convenient. It needed to happen for the action. Yeah, but also I feel like maybe in his mind he's like the people will be safer if they're not moving and there's gunfire. I don't know. I don't know either. Um. The goon can't seem to figure out how the controls of the Ferris wheel work, so he just starts climbing the thing. Um, Cutter is stopped on his car, like, up at the very top, and yep. ostensibly Rain can see him because he's sitting still. Yeah. Right? So the guy, the goon, bookish goon, reaches the top and draws on the car, but it's no empty Cutter. now. Somehow Cutter vanished without anyone seeing it, including Rain who should have been watching him this whole time from below. Yeah. Then suddenly <laughs> we see Cutter jump out of the machinery from above the guy and kick him off of the ride, killing him. Sure. Yeah. Falls to his death. Yeah. So absolutely. Rain watches sort of disinterestedly in all this. He's just like, meh. He just <laughs> like, uh, shrugs it off. And like, so as he's going to walk away. Yeah, yeah. It's what it looks. So as Cutter slides down off the ride, rain sees him fire some shots that don't land, then starts chasing him again. That his dismount, Cutter's dismount from the ride, I thought was pretty sweet, yeah, like sliding down the poles and yeah. stuff. Um, just then, some more law enforcement start to show up, a healthy mix of FBI and Lake Lucille and adjacent counties. Um, Cutter jumps onto <laughs> the carousel, uh, as does Rain, who just starts to shoot, like, just wildly. I wish he'd just been, like, just flailing his arm <laughs> just around, because that it would have had a as good a shot of hitting him. The fact that this section of the film ends without there being like a, a sequence in a hall of mirrors is a travesty. It is a travesty, but what's more of a travesty is that there's a literal chase around the merry-go-round. Yeah. <laughs> this is so fucking dumb. Well, this was like a great opportunity for rain to disappear in the chaos. Yeah. But he just has to stay and try to kill cutter. Why did so much of the action happen on the merry-go-round? I don't know. Cause it, why, why did rain, <laughs> why did the two of them sprint around this things like hamster on a wheel instead of just get off and wait and shoot him for him to like, come around? Yeah. This is so dumb. So anyway, rain doesn't think of that until he runs out of bullets. I did not. Yeah. Rain seems to realize this too late. He jumps off and reloads his gun. So Cutter comes back around on the carousel and jumps right off, like missiles himself into rain and uh -huh. rustles the gun away. Police arrive and dive on Cutter, of course, and rain restraining them both. And the FBI, thank God, are like, no, 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 let him go. Um, Cutter says that the third man, Vincent from earlier, uh -huh. he's still on the loose. He's, you remember, he's been sent to go look for a car. Um, and then he dis <laughs> Cutter describes him to the feds, failing to mention like, He's beat to all hell. His face is like he's been punched to shit. He's got bruises all over his face. That's yeah. I I guess there he's just like content to assume that Vincent like hasn't just run off. He must still be around. I don't right. know. It's, like he wouldn't even know that Vincent let, got off the plane either. He hasn't seen him. No. Nope. He hasn't. <laughs> This is also stupid. It's at that moment that we see some paramedics rushing onto the scene. And as they pass, Vincent steps into frame looking very, very ominous and staring, suspicious. Staring down that one paramedic that's left with the ambulance. It's right, like, yeah, he looks over the guy. He's like making a call on the CB. And it's like, you know, that guy's about to die. <laughs> that poor schmuck. Yeah. So at that moment, uh, we see Del Vecchio's helicopter landing at the airstrip five hours later. <laughs> yeah, that thing has made incredible time. Or or a lot of time has passed. Right. No, but it hasn't because as he's landing, that's when the vehicles are yeah, returning from convoy, the fairground. A convoy of police cars are coming back. More aircraft B-roll on showcase here. <laughs> so Agent Henderson introduces himself, says he's heard a lot about Cutter. Uh, <laughs> Cutter says the pleasure is mutual, which doesn't even that's a non sequitur yeah. for what was just said. <laughs> I've heard a lot about you. The pleasure's mutual. Yeah. What? What? Those <laughs> two. Me? We don't have. We don't have agreement between these two clauses. What is the backstory here? Like, <laughs> though, how is it that that's he's? What, heard, I've heard a lot about you from who? That's what uh, we we had discussed in the first episode. Like, what Cutter's background was? It ex-military? Did he used to work for the FBI or something like that? And then he went, you know, private working for the airline industry, or did, was it was it that he was airline industry and then went to work for the FBI and then went back to work for the airline? Like, was like, he like an American? sniper type like a celebrity he was soldier the or black something frank dukes 
Oh shit! Yes, <laughs> he was working. He was working special ops. Deep He's done cover. it all. Everyone's heard of me. I'm the best martial artist in the world. That is exactly what this feels like. Oh shit! You're John Cutter. You John Cutter. I heard, I heard, I heard of you. what you did in Sri Lanka. Everyone's like, heard. <laughs> or, everyone's or, or, it's heard like of like John me. Matrix. I heard what you did in Indonesia. I, I, that in thing Beirut. that you did in Beirut. Yeah. yeah. Like, every he has a fucking <laughs> thing. Like you're a fucking legend. Jason Bourne. Anyway, so Del Vecchio walks up and Cutter unloads on him for not telling him that Rain would be on that flight. Del Vecchio is like, hey, the, that's the Fed's fault. They didn't tell the airline anything about it. Yeah. So as Rain is led past, Henderson gets in his face and says that he knew the agents that Rain killed on the flight. Rain thanks him for telling him that information because he enjoys meeting people whose lives he's touched. Asshole. Yeah, fucking crazy ass. So Cutter grabs him and threatens him. Rain reminds him that they still need to worry about the remaining passengers and that his people have been instructed to start killing passengers in 20 minutes if he's not released. Which is not the truth, right? Right. That's not the plan he left them with. Unless there's, unless that's the plan that's inside the plan when he says stick to the plan. I, well, I, as if nothing else he had said, you know, if they haven't refueled and let you take off in an hour, then start killing people. So maybe it's 20 minutes until the hour is up and it's fair. It's true enough that they'll start killing people if they haven't been told something. All I can think is I would not be surprised if rain has no plan. There is no plan. The plan (laughs) is that there is no plan. They're just twist. (laughs) That's why we're going to fly until we run out of fuel and crash in the ocean. That's why it's genius. They'll never suspect I have no plan. So Henderson tells his guys to get rain inside. Then he leads cutter Biggs and Del Vecchio inside as well and starts like laying out the FBI's plan they uh they'll tell the bad guys that rain is going to be allowed to reboard the flight fbi agents will escort rain onto the plane at which point snipers will take out rain and whatever terrorist comes to the door to let him in cutters like you know wire me up and i'm gonna id the bad guys um but you guys need to take rain out first very adamant on that point yeah um other Mm -hmm. agents will then deploy tear gas and raid the plane the plane actually sounds pretty decent yeah it does sound decent um, Del Vecchio, of course, doesn't like the plan, saying it's too dangerous, but Cutter <laughs> points out that Rain's already killed hostages and he's certainly going to kill more. Yeah, we, we can bank on that at this point. Sure. Um, Henderson says, you know, I'll go talk to Rain, tell him that we've agreed to release him. But Cutter's like, no, 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 no. Let me go talk to him alone. Let's stop and recognize at this moment that Cutter doesn't even formally work for the airline yet. Like, and he sure as hell doesn't work for law enforcement. He's just a guy. He's like, no, you let me go in there and tell him. And everyone just defers. Yeah, like, okay, oh, definitely. Yeah. This, this is going to be great. And sounds good. He's like, whatever the law enforcement response would be, this is probably spoiling their case. Right. Everything. You just let some, some civilian in there to negotiate or but whatever. John Cutter. <laughs> That's whoever, true. Whoever it's the John, fuck that is. <laughs> it's John Cutter. Oh shit. You're John Cutter. Oh, damn. Your reputation precedes you, sir. So anyway, we cut and we see Vincent arriving on the tarmac in an ambulance and dressed as a paramedic. So we know that that's that's going to end poorly for <laughs> the, yeah. the, f- the monkey in the wrench. That's right. The pain in the he, ass. He Vincent. enters the airport, not stopped, not deterred, not, not no all. ID check. Yeah, no the ambulance. Nothing. Come on in. Come right on in, sir. Inside the airstrip, Cutter enters the room where Rain's being held and orders the guys guarding him out. Those dudes are just happy to take orders from Cutter. Yeah. It's just some yes, dude. Sir. Yes, sir, yes, sir. sir. Okay, sir. Whatever you say, um, sir. It, Rain praises Cutter as a worthy adversary and laments that their time together will soon be over. Cutter threatens Rain, saying that basically prison will be the least of his worries if more hostages die. Rain says they both know that he'll never end up in prison because the authorities will never risk the needless deaths of the hostages. Cutter says, yeah, that's probably true. Um, so maybe I should kill you myself right here but then things get phyllis like weirdly philosophical and also just like some weird like racist shit so you wouldn't take advantage of a helpless man would you it's never stopped you ah that's the american way isn't it brother Mm -hmm. you should know you're used to being taken advantage of is he talking about like slavery here that i i think yes i think it's a comment about historically black people in america being taken advantage of right that's that's definitely how you're used to getting very social commentary. Then Rain says that he knows that Cutter has the same drive to kill as he has. I know the breed, Cutter. 
Oh, yeah. That line and delivery from Bruce Payne is excellent. I thought that. I know the breed. Yeah. That's like stuck in my head even all these years later when I was rewatching the movie. I was like, oh, I remember that line. Yeah, it's um, yeah, he's definitely talking some racist smack right now. Um, so they tussle a little bit as Cutter loses his patience. He's like, no, nah, I'm sick of your shit. <laughs> <laughs> You need the passengers. I want the plane. Put me back on board and the passengers will be released. Yeah, right. I'm supposed to trust you. Uh Trust your instincts. My instincts are to wax your ass all over this floor. (laughs) And then those are your emotions acting without the benefit of intellect. It's like another. uh, Is that like another shot at his like? I think so. Mental capacity. Yeah, it's like basically saying like black people are animals you like, could never be as intelligent as i right. am it's like eugenics so now the passengers lives are in your hands don't fail them so cutter shoves rain back down into his chair and leaves the room and rain sort of like <laughs> smirks ominously yeah knowingly like <laughs> but this was cutter's plan right like right. cutter's accomplished his objective which is to let rain think he's in control i th- i think so yeah I think this I think this whole scene went down exactly the way Cutter wanted it to. Right. Another weird thing I noticed, there was a bizarre poster in the office for Flex Bodybuilding with this buff ass chick on it. <laughs> and I was just like, that is odd. Some American gladiator shit. Yeah, dude, it was like sky or something. I some love shit. that. I love it. Electra I did not notice that. I was yeah. I was mesmerized by the Pain's tour de force uh, yeah. acting. Yeah, it was good. Um, <laughs> How you feeling? This was. I'm feeling good. This was a good. A good segment. It's like Fast and Furious. The whole part of the carnival. I'm still like, like what? It's like Die it's, Hard Two is supposed to be. You know, Die Hard on a plane. But then it's like you've got all this action that's like not on the plane. So all all throughout this movie, ever so much of it just feels like the stakes are so small and the stage they're on is so small. Yeah, like it's just like yeah, we can set this carnival up for pretty cheap you know like the it just feels like the movie was done on like a hella cheap like a shoestring budget yeah. and maybe it was um but it got a pretty wide it. release and and performed well yeah it just feels yeah, like I mean, it way out it way out made what it was made for i feel like there wasn't a lot of quality control and like a lot of thought and love and care yeah maybe they were just like we got to get this thing out you guys come on let's just we crank just that shit out down and out. dirty gotta get it out yeah, but it um, stood the test of time. Here we are. Yeah, so thirty years who later. Knows, who knows whose plan is it going to be? Cutter's plan? Is it going to be? <laughs> is going to be Rain's? Not a plan. Do either people even have a plan? I feel like Cutter's got a plan. Okay. Rain. Rain is <laughs> content to not have one. He's not in it for the money. What is he in it for? The notoriety. He's the in infamy? it for the, the adrenaline the rush. Infamy? He's Bodhi, but, he yeah. does, but he's but he's not into surfing. He's not into anything. He's got his money. He doesn't need to raise money. He's an aristocrat. He's independently wealthy. Maybe. All right. So I'm convinced then he probably has used his exorbitant wealth okay. to fund Middle Eastern like freedom fighters during the Arab Spring or something, Shit. and that they're shielding him, and, and that that's why like he can't be touched. Well, I was thinking this the other day. I think there's people in the world, like certain terrorists, or Bin Laden or something, who yeah. would sit around and watch they want to watch the world watch burn, the baby. chaos and the, the destruction that they cause and like delight, and that yep. might be like, that might be what Rain lives for, oh, is yeah. just like, what is the the Batman, like some people just want to watch the world burn. Yeah. Like you're just, this is what I'm engine. in it for it. This is what I'm in it for is just to, but that's also to this, stir that, shit that up. That reminds me of, you know, Heath, Heath Ledger's line in, in, um, dark Knight is yeah. plan. I don't have a plan. <laughs> that, yeah, totally. That's totally what this feels I'm like. I'm just a sort of an anarchist type of dude. He's got lots of, and that's, that's what I was saying about his wealth. That's what I was getting to is that he's probably got his, his money is tied up in oil and, Securities oh, in like the so UAE or, from... or or Saudi Arabia and things like that, and so okay. he's like they're invested in him. Um, he's invested in them, and that's how his money doesn't get. You know, um, th- there are no sanctions or anything on his wealth. He's probably got it all like tucked in the Middle East. Somewhere. Okay, that was that was my point of bringing it back to it that. It totally could be. I mean, they just never. They just never give us any of this information, right? The screenplay. He's doesn't. probably been disowned by. The UK. Uh, sure. Yeah. He's got to be like a citizen without a country. But his or shit something. is tied up elsewhere. But anyway. 
That's a lot of conjecture. <laughs> and that's the end of this exciting chapter. That's, this is the penultimate. Penultimate chapter. Of Passenger 57. We hope you guys are enjoying the ride. If not, um, please put your oxygen mask on first and then help the person <laughs> next to you. And, uh, and we'll see you next time. We'll be back. <laughs> <laughs>